Hello and welcome to the video. Today I'll be brewing a mild ale. Mild ale originated in England and it's often called one of the oldest beer styles. Today we think of mild ales as those low alcohol beers that are still packed with flavour, but British history tells us that mild originally meant a young beer. Back in time this style would have been known as small beer or table beer. During the early 1960s, mild ale accounted for about half of the beer consumed in the United Kingdom. By the time we reached the mid-1970s, it was running scarce. This was a decline not helped by rumours of all the slops going back into mild barrels. In recent times, there have been various revivals and the craft beer industry has had versions all over the world. Mild ales have also been replicated by bulk breweries all over the world too. From a brewer's perspective, the mild represents a good challenge, to recreate a low alcohol beer that is satisfying as a regular beer. The recipe I present here for you is a very tried and tested one, and for anyone tasting it without knowing its ABV, they would be led into thinking this is a regular tasty British ale. I call it the mild man. Here is a quick flash of the recipe, naturally this is included in the YouTube description. You will note the very high mash-in temperature that this beer has. This is essential to the style. The recipe here is a fairly simple one, but don't let this fool you. These beers are packed full of flavour, despite having a very low alcohol level. I will be using Fuggles hops for this one, but you could use East Kent Goldings or anything similar. It will all work. Also, I'm using Mangrove Jack's MO3 yeast here but uh, if you don't have this one but you have something like Fermentis SO4 or any other type of British owl yeast these will also work too. Okay so without further ado let's get into the brew. And I want to start off now by actually showing you the grain crush that I have here. You'll see that it's relatively fine and it's a grain crush like this that will actually lead us into the higher efficiencies. Get this wrong you could do everything else but you're still not going to get a nice efficiency. So now it's time to actually dough in and what I'm doing is I've preheated my strike water and I'm now gradually adding that grain and stirring as I go. This is essential again for getting the right type of efficiency. So I've now added the rest of my grain and what I'm doing is I'm really breaking it all up and making sure that every single part of this grain is now wet. Spend a bit of time with this and you'll get rewarded. Just like getting the grain crush right, this is another thing that is critical to your mash. If you don't get this right, everything you do from this point onwards will always be as restricted as what you do here. Once you've added all your grain, you should actually have a porridge-like consistency. It shouldn't be something which is super easy to stir. You should be having to make a bit of effort to get that to actually uh, stir around. And you want to stir it from the top, the bottom and the middle. So now it's time to put the grain plate in and push this all the way to the grain itself and then lift it up slightly. Again this is something that we do for added efficiency. Once you've done that, add all of your different pipe work and you'll see that I'm adding a small filter here which is actually a sink strainer and this will actually uh, filter out any loose bits of grain that gets recirculated into our wort here. As you can see here I've already organised all of my additions and I've started the mash. Okay so here's the mash schedule and this one has a pretty high mash in temperature. And that's basically because we're not trying to create a very fermentable wort here. Don't forget, this is a mild owl, and we want it to be slightly sweet, and we want it to be of a lower alcohol. So this is how we do it. So now it's time for the sparge. And as you can see here, I have no problems with this sparge, but I've had a lot of people question uh, what to do if you have a bad sparge experience. Uh, people having stuck sparges and so on. This is usually caused by an overly fine grain crush and if you have that 
and you really have no way of uh, getting any new grain then I would suggest that you add rice holes as shown here on the screen. I believe it's actually worth having some of these at home um, just so that when you do need them you have them there. Perhaps buy something like half a kilo or so on and this should last you for a long time. But what about if you're in one of those sticky situations where you have right no rice holes and you have a stuck sparge? Well, I'm about to show you. Make sure that before you start doing this you've added plenty of water. What has no doubt happened is the grain has started to compact. So the first thing we're going to do is start separating it by driving our mash paddle actually between the grain just to break it up nicely. After that you're going to want to start giving everything a good stir but make sure that while you're doing this you still have water so be careful and make sure you add more regularly just so that you don't have more compacting going on as you're doing this. After that you want to gradually start moving the grain that's at the bottom all the way up to the top stirring as you go. And here I am adding more water uh, as described earlier. What you see here is the bottom of my sparge water heater and you can see that it has some marks on it and we really can't have that so I'm going to give it a little clean. So what I've done is I've added a litre of water here with a tablespoon of PPW and I'm just going to let that sit at 55 degrees for a while just to give it a little clean up. The other thing that I do while I'm waiting for the boil to happen is I actually give my fermentation vessel a clean out. So what I've done is I've added antibacterial uh, washing up liquid to this and I've started putting water in. You'll see the foam is very high. I will gradually add more water to this as the foam starts to die down. So we're up to about 97 degrees now on our boil and what I've done is I've added a plastic bag to the top of the grain basket here ready to flip it over. OK and the end result here is that I've flipped it over into a bucket all of the grain in one bag ready for the easy disposal. When you're approximately 1 degree Celsius away from your boil temperature then I suggest you watch the boil. You really don't want anything to boil over. As soon as you start to see the foam forming then either start stirring or give it a spray and then stir. Personally I prefer the spray method because it really makes sure that you get that foam down. Once you've dealt with any potential boil over, now it's time to clear the protein uh, which is the foam on top uh, and to uh, set this brew on its way. So you can see that what I'm doing here with my paddle is I'm lightly skinning the top and this will basically cause the protein deposits on top to disperse down. Usually we will wait until we've actually dispersed all of this foam before we actually start the boil and add the first 60 minute or 90 minute hop addition. This particular beer has the hop addition start at 45 minutes on account of the fact that it's a mild and not particularly bitter. So now that's all handled it's time to continue cleaning my fermentation vessel. When it comes to brewing as long as you get the cleanliness and the sanitization right, most of the rest will just follow naturally into making good beer for you. Never forget to clean your fermentation vessel's lid either, particularly on the edges that you see here. This is where bacteria and all sorts of crap can really start to collect. And yeah, be very, very careful. All it takes is a little bit of bacteria and your whole batch is ruined. So it's now time for a hop addition and look how lovely and green they are. Once you've added your hops it's essential to give them a nice stir in. Not forgetting the foam head that you see at the top there you also want to get rid of that at the same time. Just like when we're actually stirring in the foam, this is pretty much the same technique when you're stirring in the hops. All we're really doing is just gliding the top and the idea being that we want those hops to drop down. 
The other thing that we want to do during the boil is give the bottom a good scrape. The idea being that this will stop too many deposits forming at the bottom. So a quick check of my sparge water heater bottom and you can see that it's cleaned up nicely with that small amount of PPW and water at the bottom. Nice nice. So it's not far off the end of the boil now and you can see that I've paused the timer. That's because it's time to run some of this boiling hot wool through my counterflow chiller and give it a nice uh, clean up. It's now the end of the boil and it's time for a quick whirlpool. After that I'll let it stand for about 5 minutes, even though this isn't a hoppy brew, just to make sure we have no problems with the pump. I'm leaving the transferring of the wort into the fermenter a little bit late on this one because I believe that these British styles really, really benefit from actually f starting the wort at a lower temperature, raise it up so that it's then at fermentation temperatures and on you go. It just has a nice effect. So today I'm trialling this uh, aeration pump to see if it makes any difference. I'll let you know later. So here's the star of the show for this brew. I have here Mangrove Jack's MO3 Dark Owl Yeast. I have used this yeast before and I was very very happy with the flavours that it imparted in the beer. Right, so let's get her in then. And you'll notice that uh, as usual I'm not going to stop the pump, I'm just going to put the yeast directly in. After that I move the fermenter back and forth just to make sure that all of my yeast gets hydrated. So most of the wort is actually inside the fermentation vessel now and you can see that where the pump is on the right hand side I definitely have a different consistency of foam and it's slightly higher on the fermenter. Here's a quick look at the resulting wall, and I'm pleased to say that all goals were reached within this brew. So I've got everything connected up now and I've got uh, a blow off uh, connected uh, directly to the fermenter, a couple of brew belts there and everything connected up to a temperature controller. Uh, as I mentioned earlier I'm starting off a little bit lower than the fermentation temperature of 18 and letting it rise up gradually. This gives a nice clean taste. It's also a nice little trick that British brewers have been doing for decades. So I did a little experiment here as you noticed earlier with the wall aeration pipe. And yeah, I would really like to say that it made a huge difference, but to be quite honest it really didn't. Refer back to my notes of when I last used this yeast and yeah, pretty much the same experience really. About three hours before starting to see fermentation. So here's a shot here of the early fermentation. You can see that she's moving pretty steady and nice here. Um, I do everything I can to help my yeast along the way. Uh, after all, all we're doing is creating wort. It's the yeast that creates the beer. And the yeast health and all the conditions are vital. As I think I mentioned in a previous video, when I was brewing in England, I was using pure oxygen and, you know, really going for it. But when I moved to Norway, I couldn't really buy everything straight away and I certainly couldn't bring everything along either. And oxygen was one of those things that I just couldn't bring. And I have to say, for the difference that it makes, I'm quite happy I've not got it now. So there you have it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly had a lot of fun brewing this beer and making the video for you guys. I've covered quite a few different beer styles along the way and um, obviously there's an awful lot more that I can cover. But I'm also very curious as to what you guys would like to see in the future. So yeah, drop me a line in the, on the video here and let me know what you'd like. Just don't make a suggestion of me brewing a lager. Please. So if you did like this video then please do go ahead and like it on YouTube. This really helps me out and allows the videos to be seen by a wider audience on YouTube. I've got a lot of videos in the pipeline for the future so if you're interested in uh, seeing what I've got coming up then please subscribe for future content. If you have any questions on anything that I've covered in this video or in others or anything to do with brewing in general then please do not hesitate to get in touch. I'm more than happy to help. Until then, happy brewing.